Hello and welcome back. Today I want to look at how resistors can be measured. I mean, how hard can it be? Well, depending on the value you're trying to measure and the precision of interest, you will end up with using more and more complex measurement methods. These methods are not just used to measure unknown resistors from your resistor box, for example, but are also applicable to measuring resistive sensors like NTCs, RTDs, or any other such type of sensor. So if you're curious about how you can measure resistors with up to six wires, then keep watching. So let's start off with the basics. The main method by which a resistor is measured is by applying Ohm's law. The value of the resistor is determined by dividing the voltage drop on it when a certain amount of current passes through it. Simple enough. But there's one more thing to point out here. Most multimeters that measure resistance have some sort of preconditioning circuitry that feeds an ADC, an analog to digital converter. And the analog parameter in ADC is usually a voltage. So even if you're trying to measure a current, the preconditioning circuit will turn the current into a voltage that the ADC can then measure. So now let's see how we can apply Ohm's law using only voltmeters. So the basic measurement circuit would look something like this. We have a current source of known value that feeds our unknown resistor and we also use a voltmeter to measure the voltage drop on this unknown resistor. And by taking the two values into account we can calculate the value of said resistor. But building a current source of known value isn't that easy. So to remove an extra headache, we can replace the current source by a voltage source and use an extra known resistor. So a circuit like this. Now we either know the value of the voltage source or we measure it using an extra voltmeter. The reason to do the setup this way is that by knowing the two voltage values, we can work out the voltage drop on our known resistor and from this calculate the current passing through it and the current therefore passing through the unknown resistor. And now taking into account this current value and the voltage drop measured using voltmeter 2 on the unknown resistor, we can work out the unknown resistor's value. So to illustrate this method, I prepared the setup right here. So I have a power supply with my first meter measuring its exact value. So if the power supply is well known, then you don't need this meter. Then the current is passing through a known value resistor, 33 kilo ohms in this case. And then I'm using my second voltmeter from which we also have a set of two test leads. So it's a two wire measurement going to an unknown resistor. And based on the value of the two meters and the known resistance, we can calculate what our unknown resistor value is. So let's try it out. First off, we have an unknown resistor that has 47 kilo ohms, but we don't know that. If we take our value, so 5.89 volts going in, 3.437 volts dropping on the resistor and 33 kilo ohms the known resistor, we can work out that the unknown resistor is 46.23 kilo ohms. So this is extremely close to what it's supposed to be. Of course, some tolerance will come from the measurement equipment precision and from the known value resistor precision. Now, this method is quite good as long as the known and the unknown resistor values are relatively close by. So right now they're almost identical, but this will work quite well, even if the ratio of resistance is about 10. So if I swap out my unknown resistor to a 270 kilo ohm one, we have our two values. And based on these, we can calculate that our unknown resistor has 264.6 kilo ohms. So again, a very accurate measurement. And if we go the other way, trying to measure a smaller resistor, so 3.3 kilo ohms in this case, we have our two measured values. And from this, we can calculate that the unknown resistor is 3.27 kilo ohms. So again, very accurate measurement. So we're done, right? Well, there's an issue with this measurement method. And that gets especially obvious when measuring very small values or when a very high degree of accuracy is needed. 
So in a meter, the entire processing circuitry sits inside of the meter, and the unknown resistor is some distance away. And to interconnect the two, you will be using a set of test leads. But as with anything in this world, the test leads have finite, non-negligible resistance. And not only that, but the various electrical contacts, so between the test leads and the meter, and between the test leads and the unknown resistor, have also non-negligible and non-predictable resistance, based on how corroded the contacts are. So it's very possible to get up to a few extra ohms from the test leads and the test contacts when performing a measurement. And this is not a problem when trying to measure a mega ohm, but it's a very big issue when you're trying to measure an 100 milliohm shunt resistor. And the easiest way to overcome this issue is by using the four wire measurement setup. Now, from a measurement point of view, it's exactly the same as before, it's just that we split up the two measurements, the current and the voltage, into separate lines. So to inject the current, we have our initial two voltmeters and no resistor, and we're injecting the current through one set of wires, but the voltage measurement is performed using a different voltmeter, so voltmeter free, with its own wires that contact our unknown resistor directly close to the resistor, so as close to its body as possible. Now, this measurement method will not remove the various lead and contact resistances, but it will allow us to perform an accurate measurement regardless. So we're measuring the injected current in the meter's body accurately regardless of what's going outside, and we're measuring the voltage drop directly on the resistor regardless of what voltage drops occur throughout the system. So this way we should be able to get a far more accurate measurement. So the leads and the various contacts, even though they provide extra parasitic resistance, will not affect our measurement. So to illustrate this measurement method, I prepared this setup in which I kept my two initial voltmeters and the known resistor, but I added a third meter whose wires are connected directly to the unknown resistor. So right now my known resistor has 10 ohms, and the unknown resistor that I'm trying to measure has 270 milliohms. So if and I perform the various connections, so right off the bat, we can notice something quite interesting. The voltage measured on the current injection leads is about 75 millivolts, whereas the voltage measured directly on the resistor is 36 millivolts. So we're going to get completely different results by applying the two measurement methods, the two and the free wire. So by taking into account only these two voltage measurements and the known resistor, we can work out that the unknown resistor has 562 milliohms, which is almost double than what it actually is. But if we now take into account our third voltage measurement, based on all the values, we can work out that the unknown resistor has 273.9 milliohms, which is exactly what the resistor actually has. So by using the four wire measurement setup, even though it's more complicated, it's far more precise, especially when measuring very small values. Now, for a laboratory measurement, using four wires is perfectly reasonable. You have dedicated tabletop meters that are capable of performing this measurement. Also, when precision is of the utmost importance, this measurement method can also be used for sensors. But using four wires, especially over very long distances, can be pretty costly. So next, let's look at a measurement method that is more accurate than the two-wire method, but uses only three wires. Now, in a previous video, I said that the free wire measurement setup can be done using the bridge measurement setup, but as pointed out by my viewers, this only works if we have a variable resistor inside of our bridge that we adjust until the bridge is balanced. So even though this setup works, it's not that practical and it's quite cumbersome because we need this variable resistor that we need to adjust and then we need to measure somehow. So it's not really an everyday use case type of setup. So the other way to perform a free wire measurement looks something like this. So as before, we're injecting a current and we're measuring it using our first two voltmeters and our known resistor. This current travels through one line, through the unknown resistor and back through the other. But when we analyze the voltage measured by our second voltmeter, we can say that this is equal to the voltage drop on our unknown resistor, the voltage that we actually care about, 
plus the voltage drop on our two current feeding lines. Now, if we consider the two lines to be identical, we can say that the value that we're after is the voltage drop on the unknown resistor minus two times the voltage drop on one of the lines. So we can use our third voltmeter to simply measure the voltage drop on one of the lines and then multiply this by two and subtract it from our total voltage measurement. And as long as the two current feeding lines are identical, this will work out quite nicely. So to illustrate this measurement method, I prepared this setup in which I kept my initial two voltmeters and the known resistor and the third voltmeter rather than being connected over the unknown resistor is only connected on one of the measurement terminals and the other terminal is connected to one of the previous voltmeters. The idea being that this third voltmeter only measures the voltage drop on the measurement wire. Now from a setup point of view the injected current is connected as close as possible to the unknown resistor so that when we're measuring the voltage drop, we're measuring the voltage drop only on the measurement wires, not on any extra leads coming from the unknown resistor. So now if we take the measured values, first of all, taking into account only the two voltmeters and the known resistor, the unknown resistor's value would end up being 469 milliohms, which is far from truth, but if we now take into account our third voltmeter, the calculated value is about 248 milliohms. Slightly lower than what we have, we have 270 milliohms, but much closer as a value than the two wire measurement. So of course, if the two measurement leads are identical, they should cancel out. In my case, there's some sort of difference in between them, so the canceling out doesn't happen as it's supposed to be, so we're not getting the exact value. Now, there are of course other methods in which the free wire setup can be constructed, so you can have different positions of voltmeters and the data process differently. But the end result will still be the same. Regardless, this method is especially useful in measuring sensors, when the usage of proper contacts and soldered wires can basically eliminate contact resistance. The main source of error, therefore, the wire resistance is measured and eliminated so the unknown sensor resistor value can be accurately measured, even when the wires are tens of meters long. So now we're done, right? Well, there's one more measurement method that I wanted to discuss. And this one involves using up to six wires. Six wires. So when measuring a standalone resistor, regardless of value, you can use one of the previous methods, two wires up to four. But what do you do when you're trying to measure a resistor that is used inside of a circuit? So if you want to measure this resistor, this is quite a common necessity, especially when testing circuits during manufacturing. When you assemble a board and you want to automatically verify that the assembled resistors have correct values. So first off, we can simplify a complex circuit with multiple circuits node to something like this. So our unknown resistor is in parallel with another two resistors, which represent the rest of the circuit. And we have a circuit node between which and our unknown resistor is a single component or multiple components for that matter. Now, if we apply our classic four wire measurement setup, so we inject the known current and we measure the voltage, voltage measurement is accurate. It's measured directly on our unknown resistor, but the current that we're injecting is going partially through our unknown resistor and partially through the rest of the circuit and we don't know how much is going through our resistor of interest. So what the six wire measurement technique does is that it adds an extra two guard lines going to the other circuit node and it measures the voltage on our unknown resistor and it sets the same voltage in the circuit node. The reason for this being that if you have the same voltage in two points of the circuit, then there's no current flowing in between them. So by setting the same voltage in this point, there's no current flowing through R1. Therefore, all the current that our initial current source injected only flows through our unknown resistor. Any current that's flowing through R2 is coming from our op amp. The reason for having two extra lines is that one of the lines is used to inject current and the other line is used to measure the voltage. So again, just like with the four wire measurement, 
if we want to be very accurate, we'll need a separate line to inject current different from the one on which we measure the voltage. Now, this is quite a complex measurement method. It's not that easy to implement, but when you really, really need it, it will give good results for in-circuit components. And to highlight this method, I prepared two test circuits in a simulator. So first of all, we have our four wire measurement setup in which we're trying to measure our equivalent circuit, so our resistor of interest and two other resistors representing the rest of the circuit. And for this, I'm injecting a one milliamp current and I'm measuring the voltage over resistor R9. So this represents the internal impedance of the voltmeter. I also added wire resistances, so one ohm. So if we take the voltage over resistor R9 divided by one milliamp, we get a value of 909 ohms. So this is coming from the resistors placed in parallel and it's nowhere near the 10 kilo ohms that we are supposed to be getting. So to apply the six wire measurement, I prepared this other setup in which I kept my four wire measurement setup and I added this extra op amp, which on the positive line is sensing the voltage measured directly on the resistor of interest and using the other two guard lines is setting the same voltage potential inside of our test circuit. So if we look at how this circuit behaves, first of all, we can check the two voltages, first of all, on the resistor of interest and then in the other circuit node, and we can see that they are extremely close together. So we only have about 20 microvolts difference. And if we check the current going through R5, we can see that we only have about 50 nanoamps. So a completely different value than the 900 microamps that we had before. Now, the reason why the two voltages aren't exactly the same has to do with the op amp that's being used and the offset it has. So since I'm not using an ideal op amp, it's built in offset will cause us some measurement error. But regardless, if we check the voltage drop on R14 and divided by the one milliamp that we injected, we get a value of 9.98, almost 9.99 kilo ohms. So extremely close to the actual value. In the end, measuring resistors can be as simple as whipping out your two lead multimeter or as complicated as using a massive measurement setup when testing in circuit components. As always, the best way depends on your exact use case. But as a general rule of thumb, more precision will require more complexity. And with that said, hope you got some useful information out of this. Leave your thoughts in the comments. Thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe to be up to date with all my videos and see you next time. Bye bye.